Edmonton not being centered. You guys excited for the fourth quarter in 2015? Are you guys all going to shoot your dreams and all your goals until the end of the year? Do you guys want to hear from Arnold Nakahawa there today? These seven have absolutely put Edmonton and surrounding areas on the beach by the map. So congratulations to them and congratulations to all of you for being here. Thank you very much. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call in my name, so please stand up, wave, and uh, please give them a round of applause. They've worked hard, they've worked for weeks literally planning for this. They put on a show. When I come to Edmonton, I was hoping to super Saturday in the hotel, say hi, <laughs> shake hands, Kiss babies, listen to listen, you know, listen to Carl, and that's it. You guys just go above and beyond. So as I call their names, please recognize them. Heather Rice, where's Heather Rice? Where's she? Krista Muniz. Our super MC, Mr. Sean Morgano. Sarah Osborne. Where is she? There she is. Shannon Kramer. Katrina Cooper and Lori Valette. Awesome. Okay, so we're almost at the end of Super Sunday. Super thrilled to be here. Really excited to push through the end of the year. But I know that you're at a place where you've been pushing and you've been pushing. Some of you have been getting results. Some of you have not been getting those results that you've been pushing for. It's been like a marathon. See, last year in December, of 2014, I committed to a coach, a leader, that I would do something that I've never done in my fitness journey. I've done every single program, P90X, Insanity, Body Beast, you name it. The one thing that I had not done, the one next challenge that I had always put away saying, that's not for me. Maybe some of you said that when coaching was presented to you. Maybe you said that when they told, they told you about that challenge, you said, no, I'm not good enough, and I don't want to be in a group, and I don't want to share, and I, like Sandra talked about, I don't want to be vulnerable. And I had to be vulnerable. I had to practice what I preach every day with the coaches. And she said, you need to run a marathon. Do we have any runners in the house? Okay, so you know exactly the fear that I had when she told me that I had to run a marathon. I could have said no. The same way you could have said no to being here at Super Sunday, the same way you could have said no to that challenge, the same way you could have said no to being a coach, right? It's very easy to say no. It's much harder to say yes. So as I tell that short story, I want you to think about something that you're facing right now. Whatever challenge that you're facing that Caleb Thomas, by the way, what about Caleb Thomas? And so I want you to think about those challenges again. I want you to go deep inside yourself. We're gonna go through these challenges together. We all face them. And we're gonna look at how we can come out of them. And I'm gonna share what I did to come out of those. And so I trained for two and a half months. I was supposed to train for four months. The day came, I was scared to death, okay? I hadn't trained enough. It was a beautiful day. There's a ton of people, adrenaline rush. And I thought back to that day when I committed to say to saying yes to running a marathon. That was the easy part. The easy part is when you said I'm going to become a coach. The easy part was that first day before doing that first workout in your challenge. That was the easy part. And when the rubber met the road, he meant my Achilles heel almost popping off. He meant seeing seven-year-old's grandma pass me and speed walking past me. And I'm running going, she from comparison. Anybody compare themselves? Anybody compare themselves with challengers? Anybody compare themselves with coaches? That coach started at the same time as me. I can't believe she was the top premier coach, Dr. Krista Murius. I started at the same time, right? I can't believe that you lost that. What was the biggest loser? 140 pounds? Stand up one more time just so I can see you. Where are you? Where are you? Biggest loser. Congratulations to you, right? There were people that started at the same time as you that didn't put in the effort, maybe that didn't, that didn't push as much, and started comparing themselves. See, I started comparing myself. 
I haven't prepared long enough. And so I'm running, and I have my success partner. By the way, that's so important to have someone else in your corner. My success partner was Doug Moss, my colleague, who was running with me. And very quickly, we found that we actually complemented each other. On the uphills, I was booking it. On the downhills, my knees were like about to pop every single step of the downhill. And so we complemented each other. And for about 13 miles through about the halfway point, we were good. We were doing well. So I don't know what your halfway point is, but that halfway point meant for us to celebrate with all our friends. So we're taking selfies, right? I mean, you're a beach one. You've got to take a selfie. So we're taking selfies. We're posting on Facebook. It was three miles down the road that we took some oranges and bananas and drank Gatorade and started walking and started embracing our success. We started reading our own press clippings. And those 16 miles that we had ran almost stopped at mile 18. At mile 18, what happened, it's about to be graphic, if, if you're sensitive, plug your ears. At mile 18, those oranges and bananas, they came out faster than they went in. And so here's my success partner, the guy that I'm hoping I finish with. He's bent over, and so it sounds that I, I, it's Sunday, it's the day of the Lord, and I'm not gonna say it here. But he just, you know, he just, just, his whole life is basically on the ground. And I'm here, and I realized because I stopped, like, my legs are all cramped. So you know those cramps that just catch your calves? They were all over me, okay? So I'm cramped up, my success partner is here, just throwing his life out, and I'm going, I start talking to myself. Maybe you've done that as a coach. I've talked to some coaches where you say, maybe I've done that. Maybe I was, I was speaking to someone before even coming on stage. Maybe that's as good as it's going to get for me. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe this beach body thing, this is a bubble. It's not real life. Because real life, there's failure, there's naysayers, there's doubt. The only thing different between here and outside is we're a community of like-minded people that support and trust and push each other and uplift, uplift each other. But we're still faced with the same challenges everybody else has. And in that moment, at the 18 mile marker, we were ready to give up. All of a sudden, we started telling ourselves, oh, it's only 18 miles. It's pretty good. Most people haven't done 10 miles. We don't need a stupid medal. We're good enough. And we started sabotaging ourselves. And maybe where you are, you've been pushing like crazy, you haven't gotten the results. Maybe you're hitting an 18 mile mark. I don't know what that looks like. And then at that very moment, I started thinking about this video, this story, that gave me a little bit more push. And I want to share that with you guys. And maybe, just maybe, that can help you go over that 18 mile mark or so. Sean, we've got the video already. Let's go. There are days when Ben Coleman leaves the family home on Knoxwood Court just as the sun is rising. Autumn days when he takes to the paths of Anderson, South Carolina. Along freshly painted picket fences and down shady old lanes. Ben Coleman runs. I'm very relaxed. Nothing bothers me. I'm just awkward in my little, little world where everything's perfect. He loves to run. A, a kid that we didn't think would ever walk, he just loves to run. 18 year old Ben has cerebral palsy. He has limited control of his arms and the stiffness in his legs makes it tough for him just to pick his feet up. He's had to sleep with a leg brace. He's had to undergo physical therapy. Still, Ben runs. And not just for the joy of it. Ben Coleman runs to compete. For the last five years, he's been on the cross-country team at T.L. Anna High School. Even if someone says, no, I can't. I like to be able to go, yes, I can. 
Uh, it used to really bother me to have people saying, oh, look at that funny looking, funny walking kid. Now, yeah, they can say all they want, and I'm still gonna do what I do. From his earliest days, what Ben Coleman wanted most was to be on a team. But Ben and his parents could not find a team that would let him play. They were happy to have him there if he was sitting on the bench, or they were happy to have him there if he was satisfied being a water boy. He wasn't satisfied either way. Then at the end of seventh grade, Ben learned that eighth graders were eligible for the high school cross country team, and his mother phoned the coach. I felt like I needed to call and let him know that there was something a little different that he might have to contend with, you know, that he might be a little slower in his cerebral palsy. I said, no problem, bring him on. And, and she told me that, that, you know, he had a condition, and, and I told her, I said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. I was just really considered part of the team. Nobody looked at me weird or said, what's he doing here? Uh, they all were just like coach. Come on, let's go. Most runners take about 20 minutes to complete a 3.1 mile course. Ben needs more than twice that long. 45 minutes that wrap his uncooperative body and test his spirit as he falls far behind everyone else. Ben's one of the most dead kids I've ever seen. You, you got to be competitive to to almost never beat anybody, to constantly try to beat your time. And that's what Ben wants, and he wants to beat his time. It's sometimes hard to keep going when I'm all by myself. I get nervous sometimes out on courses that what's gonna happen if I fall and can't get up again, or something happens, what am I gonna do? As I do sometimes get lonely. But as Ben would continue to run, he found that he was not alone, that some competitors who had already completed the course, and others who care about him, were coming back to run with him. I feel very, very blessed to know that everybody's so willing to, to come back, because I know they're all tired, because they've already run their race. I just feel happy knowing that they're willing to be there and they're watching out for me. They would cheer him on and they would help him up the times when he would fall. Come on. My head. My stops until I see that he gets back up and he keeps on going. I worry a little bit that he's, he's going to get hurt. I know that it's going to affect his, his race time for the day because it, it discourages him more than it hurts him. Is it hard for you to see him fall now? Yes, but I never let him know it. It is tough. Just see the kid that's that motivated it, that it wants it so bad, it gets you pretty emotional. I, I have to admit, I never did to anybody, I, I've shed a tear. Amid the gathering dust towards the end of this course, Ben falls again. He gets to his feet. And then his three siblings, Megan, Alex, and Chris, accompany him as he pushes himself to the finish. A wave of exhaustion just, it hits like a brick wall. Right at the end, along with the pain. Everything that should have hurt two and a half miles ago from the falls, that's 
maximum eight days. All that can cloud this moment is the knowledge that, as a senior, Ben has just one cross country race left. What are you going to miss most about? Being part of the team and all the friends there. In his final competition, the regional championship, which his school hasn't won since 1993, Ben must once again contend with uneven terrain. It can make him trip or slip. As Ben crosses the finish line comes the realization that for the first time all year, he has broken 41 minutes. He it's very efficient being a good <laughs> And after he gets cleaned up, Ben Cohen stands at the end of his high school career, before his family and rivals, and among his teammates, just as he always dreamed he would. Not as the special one, not as the different one, but as a winning one. A member of the Hannah Yellow Jackets, champions of their region. Through a childhood challenged by others' constraints, through five years of cross-country practice and competition, Ben Coleman has been running all his life, not from something, but towards something. And in some ways, he has finally gotten it. What did running give you that you wouldn't have gotten any other way? Gave me a place to belong. I can say that it's supposed to be. <laughs> Mr. Ben Coleman.